All right, welcome back. So uh, now we're going to take a look at a demo of how the fusion is actually uh, works in this game that we have here. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, this is our agent. Okay. And uh, what we'll do is we'll bring up the agent attributes window. Uh, we've already seen the simulation properties window. This is the agent attribute and you actually have to have an agent selected. So for example, if I click someplace where there's no agent, you notice that it says, hey, there's no agent selected in the worksheet. I got no values. But if I click uh, where there is an agent, for example, here in the background, I see, oh, the temperature is zero. The temperature here is zero and the temperature of our um, avatar is also zero. Okay. Uh, from here, we can actually change it. So I could change it to, for example, 100 okay and now if I check here the temperature is zero if I check here it's zero if I check in the gold it doesn't actually have any temperature if I ask the uh, avatar it says it's a hundred all right that's nice um, the next thing I'd like to show you is a better way to display the temperature because this is simply going to get pretty old okay to try to see what temperature values are in the grid and you need to see what temperature values are in the grid just so that you can fix your program, okay? You know, it's not gonna behave the way you want. Let's see what's happening. Now, um, let me show you how the temperature changes. Here is the code for the background, okay? And there's this wonderful line here. All it says is, every five seconds, make yourself transfer heat. Transfer heat is just another method which you can create. And so we're telling it that every half a second it should uh, tell itself to transfer the um, uh, heat from its neighbors basically okay so let's see what transfer hit heat does and I just passed it there we go okay sometimes it's hard to read because of these uh, kind of like a warning sign background but it is what it is uh, now this is actually doing uh, the uh, the the algorithm that we described in the introduction video so right here we have some agent attributes we have the sum of the temperatures initially we set it to the current temperature of the background uh, we also need the number of cells that have temperature and we set that to one okay and now we make ourselves do these four things add the heat that's to our left add the heat that's to our right up down okay and we'll look at those in a second but for now just trust me that what they'll do is they'll add to some temperature the appropriate uh, amount from above below left right and then it'll also add to num cells to one two three four depending on how many cells actually have that heat property okay when we're done then uh you know after doing all these four steps then we'll set our current temperature to be the sum of all the temperatures of our neighbors divided by the number of neighbors that have temperature that's the average temperature okay and as we mentioned in the in the introductory video uh, that is very robust because it works even when there's like weird corridors and not all the cells have a temperature value now just so you can see here's the example of uh, heat left uh, this is a new condition and the condition is has attribute so uh, instead of seeing whether the thing on the left is a face or a gold or whatever, we ask the question, does whatever is on the top on the left-hand side have the attribute temperature? Okay. If it does, then go ahead and set the sum temperature, which is where we're keeping it, to be equal to, and here's the expression, sum temperature, right, whatever our current total is, plus temperature, and then in brackets, we give the direction temperature in the left okay so uh, temperature is an attribute um, property and uh, it is um, or an agent attribute I should say and uh, if you simply say temp then it refers to our temperature but if we say temp bracket left close bracket then we mean the temperature that's in the agent to our left temperature up means the temperature in the agent that's right up above us in the grid and so on. So uh, all of them look the same. The only difference is where we're looking, we have an attribute in the right and then get the temperature to the right. 
we're looking up, get the temperature up, and so on. So there's actually a lot of methods, but they're all very, very, very similar. Okay, so that's what that does, okay? It just changes the, uh, the, the current value of the temperature based on the, um, uh, the values of the temperature at our neighbors. Now, if I run this, what will happen is that our temperature is 100, this is zero, so in a step, this will actually get a little bit hotter. It won't quite be, you know, 50, because we're averaging this cell, that one, that one, that one, and that one, as five different cells. Four of them are zero, one of them is at 100, so this will jump to 20, okay? But in the next step, it'll become hotter, it'll become hotter, it'll become hotter. Eventually, because this is fixed at 100, this will approach 100 as well. It won't ever quite reach it, but it'll get very, very close. That's if I let this run and sit here for a long period of time. The problem is that if I do, the temperature will be rising, but I won't see anything, okay? It'll just look like, well, it looked like this. It could be running for all we know. Um, in order to, to fix that a little bit, uh, I added this, um, these two lines right here to the behavior of the background cells, okay? So simply what it says is this. Whenever the temperature is positive, then we're gonna change our color. This is a new command called map, okay? And what it lets you do is say map temperature, okay? So take whatever the current temperature is and map it to a color between black and red, okay? And we'll make it black if the temperature is zero, red if the temp, oh, I don't wanna change that, red if the temperature is 100, okay? So we'll see if it starts gravitating towards that bright red, then we'll know the temperature has risen quite a bit. Uh, on the other hand, if the temperature is less than or equal to zero, then we'll map to a color between blue and black. Blue if it's minus 100, black if it's zero. And that way I can now see the color kind of at a glance, but just looking at the color of the cell, they'll tell me the temperature, okay? So if, if the color is uh, in the blue end, then I know that it's a little cold. If it's in the pink uh, towards, you know, red, then I know that it's actually a little cold and maybe very, I'm sorry, a little hot or maybe very hot, depending on that shade. So uh, I'm gonna lower the uh, speed of this so that we can actually see it happen and I'll hit go. And observe, notice how the cells are getting uh, warmer and warmer and warmer and the heat is just spreading throughout the corridors, okay? Uh, over here, it'll always be 100 and you can tell that because I can still ask, what's your temperature? Oh, look, it's 100. How about right here? Right now it's 78, 79, 80 and still getting hotter. Down here, it is zero. Right here, it is 0 0.16, 18, 0.2, okay? We haven't quite made one degree. Uh, right there is 25, okay? So the temperature is slowly spreading across this uh, thing. Uh, let me show you a somewhat more dramatic version of this, uh, and that is a, a, a different worksheet that we call heat plate, okay? And I'll put it right here, and what you see here is some um, fire, temperature is 100, here is an iceberg, or actually an ice cube. Um, nope, it doesn't currently have temperature. That one doesn't currently have temperature either. Uh, as soon as I let it go, it will, because it initializes itself at minus 100, okay? And uh, now you can see this is fixed at 100, this is fixed at minus 100, fixed at 100, fixed at minus 100, and now there's some kind of a balance. So you can actually, that's 42, 28, oh look at that, 14, we're getting into the influence of the cold regime, here is minus 38, over here is 76, very much in the influence of the hot regime. So this is, again, diffusion.